Finally, the highly anticipated launch of United Launch Alliance's Vulcan rocket took place. But there's more to this story than just a successful launch. Amid the celebration, a significant challenge emerged. Before we dive deeper into this development, please make sure to subscribe to our channel for future updates on space news, especially focusing on the Starship. Initiated in 2014, Vulcan's development aimed to replace ULA's older Atlas V and Delta IV rockets and to set a new standard in the industry with improved payload capacity and flexibility for various types of missions. A notable feature is its adaptability, capable of handling different sizes and types of payloads, making it suitable for a range of missions, from deploying satellites to deep space exploration. The first launch of Vulcan was particularly noteworthy for the debut flight of Blue Origin's BE-4 engines. These engines, which use liquid oxygen and methane, provide significant thrust and are designed with reusability in mind. Additionally, Vulcan's design includes the use of two solid rocket boosters, essential for the extra thrust needed during liftoff. The rocket can accommodate up to six boosters for heavier payloads. The most recent takeoff of the rocket, which features a 5.4-meter diameter payload fairing, occurred on January 8, 2024. This launch took place from Space Launch Complex 41 at Cape Canaveral Space Force Station. During the rocket's ascent, it reached Max-Q at T plus 1 minute and 16 seconds. Max-Q is the moment of maximum aerodynamic pressure, a crucial test for the rocket's structural strength. Vulcan successfully passed through this phase, showing its robust design and build. After this point, the rocket's BE-4 engines continued to perform without any issues until they were deliberately shut off almost five minutes into the flight. This was followed by the separation of the boosters. The rocket's upper stage, which has two engines, ignited at T plus five minutes and 15 seconds, playing a key role in moving the payloads to their specific orbits. Shortly after this, the payload fairing, which covers and protects the cargo during launch, was released. This step indicated that the rocket had reached the right conditions for deploying its cargo. In the next 30 minutes, the rocket went through a coasting phase, including an additional engine burn. This sequence led to the successful separation of the Paragon lander from the Vulcan rocket at T plus 50 minutes and 26 seconds. The mission concluded about four and a half hours after liftoff, marking a significant achievement for the Vulcan rocket. However, despite the successful deployment, the mission encountered challenges. The Paragon lander, which was one of the payloads, experienced difficulties after separating from Vulcan. The lander failed to orient itself correctly towards the sun, which led to a rapid decline in its battery levels. The team worked diligently to regain control of the spacecraft and recharge its batteries. Although the lander remains in Earth's orbit, the focus shifted to maximizing the collection of scientific data and information. This issue poses a significant challenge to the spacecraft's planned soft landing on the Moon, initially scheduled for February 23, 2024, with 20 payloads on board. The lander's inability to maintain the correct orientation in space threatens its capacity to carry out the intended moon landing, impacting the mission objectives. The Vulcan's design leverages the best of what ULA has learned from over 120 years of combined launch experience with Atlas and Delta rockets. This mission served as the first of two certification flights required for the U.S. Space Force's certification process. Following this, a second certification mission is planned, along with a summer launch for the first Vulcan mission to support national security space. ULA has sold more than 70 Vulcan launches to date, including 38 missions for Amazon's Project Kuiper and multiple national security space launch missions as part of the country's Phase II launch procurement. Currently, the Vulcan rocket is an expendable launch vehicle. This design approach means that the rocket's components are not recovered for reuse after launch. However, ULA is exploring ways to recover and reuse sections of Vulcan's booster and engines in future missions. And speaking of reusability, SpaceX's Starship stands at the forefront. Unlike Vulcan, Starship is designed from its inception to be fully reusable. Both its first stage, known as the Super Heavy Booster, and the Starship spacecraft itself are intended to be flown, landed, and flown again multiple times. 
This design is revolutionary in the field of rocket technology as it moves away from the traditional approach of expendable launch vehicles. If successful, this design could significantly reduce the cost of accessing space, making it more affordable to conduct a wider range of missions, including ambitious crewed missions to the Moon, Mars, and potentially beyond. Comparing Vulcan and Starship reveals two different approaches to solving the challenges of space travel. Vulcan's plan to introduce partial reusability represents an evolution in traditional rocket design, enhancing efficiency and reducing waste. On the other hand, Starship's fully reusable design is more of a revolution, potentially changing the economics of space travel entirely. Vulcan, with its robust design, is well suited for a variety of missions ranging from satellite deployment to deep space exploration. Its potential partial reusability will likely make it more competitive in the commercial launch market. Starship, with its full reusability and high payload capacity, is aimed at more ambitious missions including interplanetary travel and the establishment of human settlements on other planets. Regarding their latest developments, SpaceX's Starship has already completed two orbital launch attempts in 2023. The first attempt took place on April 20th and the second on November 18th, both launched from Starbase in Boca Chica, Texas. Each of these flights ended with the destruction of the Starship and Super Heavy Booster prototypes by onboard autonomous flight termination systems. Despite these outcomes, SpaceX gathered valuable data from these flights to improve their design and increase the likelihood of reaching orbit in subsequent attempts. SpaceX is now gearing up for its third orbital test flight of Starship, expected to take place in February 2024. This upcoming test will be crucial in demonstrating key technologies needed for future lunar landings and other deep space missions. The test will likely involve transferring cryogenic propellant within Starship from a header tank to its main tank. This is a precursor to more complex future operations, where a Starship vehicle could transfer propellant to another Starship in orbit, a critical step for deep space missions where refueling in orbit would extend the spacecraft's range and capability. This upcoming test is part of SpaceX's broader collaboration with NASA's Artemis program. Under the Artemis program, NASA aims to return humans to the moon and establish a sustainable presence there as a stepping stone for future manned missions to Mars. Starship has been selected by NASA to be the lunar lander for the Artemis missions, tasked with transporting astronauts from lunar orbit to the moon's surface and back. And that's all for today's update. If you enjoyed watching and found it useful, please make sure to subscribe to our channel and hit the like button. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.